We live in a world full of lofty ideas and aspirations. Lots of talking, talking friends, talking coworkers, talking heads, endless opinions. But here's the truth. Talk is cheap. This age old adage really encapsulates the idea that mere words without corresponding actions are useless. They do not bring any amount of progress or fulfillment or achievement of your goals. Achievement of goals does not happen in words. It happens in taking decisive action towards your goals. Enough talk. Take action. Taking action is the linchpin that transforms aspirations into achievement, bridging the gap between contemplation and manifestation. And while discussions, plans, and ambitions serve as crucial starting points, it is the deliberate execution of those plans that allows us to achieve our goals. We can discuss financial strategies and create elaborate financial plans, but if we do not take action, they are a waste of time and paper. Countless individuals find themselves trapped in this cycle of perpetual deliberation while the allure of overthinking eclipses the imperative of taking action. However, the magic lies not in deciding and deliberating and, and endless talk, but in taking actions, even when circumstances feel less than ideal. Because right? there's always an excuse, always a reason not to take action, always a reason to think through it a little bit more, but the road to success is rarely paved with perfect conditions. Rather, it is forged through determination, resilience, and a willingness to step forward out of one's own comfort zone. Procrastination often masquerades itself as thoughtful planning, right? And it leads to an inertia that stifles progress. It's easy to fall into the trap of waiting for the ideal moment, waiting for a little bit more knowledge, waiting for the perfect alignment of circumstances. And yet the truth is that waiting for perfection often leads to missed opportunities, especially when it comes to your finances. The most significant progress is made by those who dare to act even when the present moment is not perfect. Fear, particularly the fear of failure, is another obstacle that often impedes our actions. However, failure itself is often a vital ingredient in the recipe for success. Each step back, a setback, every stumble is a lesson in disguise. Right? It's an opportunity to learn, adapt, and grow. So if you failed in your finances in the past, don't let that hinder you from taking action and moving forward in the present. Again, not in the future, but in the present. Moreover, any kind of momentum, any kind of action that you take produces momentum. And every step towards a goal generates energy, momentum, pro propelling us further and further along that road to success. The initial act of taking action can dispel doubt, provide clarity, and set in motion a series of events that build confidence and determination in your plan. We need to set goals, we need to plan steps, and we need to take action. Practical strategies can aid in transitioning from contemplation to action, right? Setting specific achievable goals and breaking them down into manageable steps and establishing a timeline and a roadmap to navigate this journey all helps us actually achieve our goals. Cultivating the discipline, resilience, and willingness to adapt is crucial in overcoming the challenges that we will face in our finances and in any other area of life. So here's the deal, right? We must create smarter goals. We want to create goals using the smarter system. If you don't know what that is, it'll break down really fast, right? The first is specific. Our goals must be specific. They, you, we need to clearly define our goals. So let's take an example, right? Let's say that you, you want to set a goal. You know, I have, I want a goal in 2024 to be financially responsible. That's not a good goal because it's not specific at all. So an improved goal might look, uh, save money. Right. That at least is a, is, is a aspect of being more financially responsible. That is much more specific. To make it even better, we would make it measurable, right? Qu that we would quantify our goal. So specific and measurable. So again, save money is still a bad goal because what does that mean? Save a dollar, save ten dollars, save a million dollars. What does that mean? So an improved goal would be save ten thousand dollars, right? It must be achievable. The goal must be realistic within the time frame and within the means that you have. And so for some people, a bad goal might be save $80,000 because it would take you forever to save that. 
and other people, it, it, it might not. But for you, then it must be achievable in your circumstances. So again, maybe save 10000 is a good goal. So specific, measurable, and achievable. Fourth, it must be relevant. The goal should be a step towards your vision, right? And so you're thinking about your finances. You're trying to improve it. You're trying to be more responsible with your finances. You say, hey, oh, you know what? I should eat healthier. And you start getting sidetracked into other goals and other areas of life. And that's, that's, that's not relevant to what we're doing, right? So we want to be relevant to the vision that we have. And so again, save $10,000. It's not any more relevant than what we just had, but it is still within what we are trying to do. Then fifth, it must be time bound. So smart, that's the, you know, we have now the smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound, which means that the goal should have a due date, right? That we could just say, you know, again, save $10,000. It is specific, it is measurable, but it's not time bound. There's no deadline for it. And so by when? And so it could be save $10,000 by March 31st. That now has a deadline. It has something pushing us to get it done. And then sixth, it must be empowering. So we've probably heard of SMART goals, but I don't think SMART goals are good enough. I do think they need the ER. And so the E of the ER of SMART-er is empowering. The goal should connect with your why, right? Because some of us, you know, we, we have goals or we make goals because someone told us we should or because we think it's a good idea or it sounds like maybe it would be responsible. And so perhaps, you know, you say save $10,000 by March 31st because I probably should, right? Someone once told me that I should have an emergency fund and so that's why I'm going to do it, right? That's not empowering. That's not going to actually force you to do it. It's not going to make, help you make the choices to save instead of spend or do this or that. And so instead, maybe it's save $10,000 by March 31st to worry about money less and live more with my family. That would be more an empowering reason for why you would make this goal. If your goals aren't empowering, if they aren't connected to your why, why you are doing things, you will never follow them and you will never achieve them. And lastly, and I think this is one of the most important steps, is the last R is reviewed. Your goal should be written and reviewed often, right? And so a bad goal would be you're, you're creating New Year's resolutions and you're saying, hey, I'm going to save $10,000 by March 31st. You're like, oh yeah, that's a good goal. It's a smart goal. This is great. And you think it and it sounds awesome. And, and then you forget. You just forget about it. And all of a sudden, June comes around. And you're like, oh man, I feel like I had a goal to save some money. I don't remember how much or by when. And you just forget about it and you never achieve it. Because you had the idea one time and you, it was thought and forgot. And so that's a bad goal. An improved goal would be save $10,000 by March 31st, written on, in the notes app on your phone with a reminder to review it weekly. So as you're doing your budgets, as you're making spending decisions, as you're deciding if you're going to make this financial trade off or that, you are constantly keeping your goals in front of you and reviewing and being reminded of those goals. And you are far more likely to stick with and therefore achieve a smarter goal than a passing wish. So you've got your goals, right? You create some, some goals for 2024 and for the future and, and you've, you've got them written down. They're smarter goals. And now what? Well, now we create a plan to get there, right? Perhaps you can create it yourself. Perhaps you need a professional to help you, uh, but you need a plan either way, right? We did a whole series on creating a financial plan, which you can go back and find and listen to. And you can always use help if it's that financial goals that you're trying to achieve. But either way, you need a plan. And a plan takes all the talk around dreams and goals and makes them concrete. One of the most effective questions you can ask after the discussion with someone else or brainstorming your own goals is, what's the next action? What's the next action? Asking this produces actual steps that you can take to achieve that goal. And often the first answer isn't the very next action, right? Oh, what's the next action? You think of something and you're like, oh, that's good. But, but then you realize if you keep asking that question, that there are other steps that you actually need to do first. And by continually asking what's the next action, you can keep breaking it down until you cannot think of anything else that you should do first. And it makes it very actionable, right? Because sometimes we have these goals, these lofty goals, and we don't know what to do next. We can't actually take any action. We can't make any progress because we just don't know what the next action is, right? So let's say that, you know, again, our, our goal is to save $10,000 by March 31st. And so you know, we think, well, what's the next action? Well, um, uh, I should save X dollars per paycheck in my savings. Oh, great. Well, that's not really an action though. It's just kind of a concept. So how would I do that? What's the next action to actually getting that done? Well, I got to figure out what X dollars is uh, to save uh, so I can hit that goal by March 31st. So I guess I would need to divide $10,000 by the number of pay cycles, the number of paychecks I get before March 31st. Okay, yep. Um, 
but I guess I don't know how many pay cycles that is. So what would be the next action? Uh, I guess I should check my calendar and my online bank to see when it was last time I was paid and I can check my calendar and determine those number of cycles. There we go. Yeah. So I guess what would be the, what would be the next action on that? Well, I would need to open my savings account and log in and, 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 uh, and, and see what's in there. So log into my bank to check. Oh, you know, but you know what? Even if I figure that out, I'm not going to be able to save paychecks into a savings account that I don't have. I don't have a savings account yet. Uh, so open a savings account. That would be the next step. Okay. But so how do I do that? Uh, what's the next action on opening a savings account? Well, I guess I would need to log into my online bank account and open a savings account. Okay. So at least one action is log into my online bank account to open a savings account and check when the last time I got paid was so that I can calculate the X for my savings goal. Okay. That's a concrete next action. But you know, I also heard about a money market account and my financial planner once told me that I should save into a money market account for an emergency fund. Ah, oh, man, I should, so I should explore money market accounts. Okay. But what does that mean? How do you explore money market? Well, what's the next action on actually exploring money market accounts? Well, my financial advisor would know. I, he's the one who told me about it. So, uh, you know what? The next action is to email my financial planner to ask him about money market accounts. And there's two. Now, out of that, we have two. We can email our financial advisor. That is one easy, concrete action we can take to move us along towards that goal of saving $10,000. And the other one is to log into our bank account and open a savings account and check when the last time we were paid. So we can calculate, hey, how much of our paycheck do we need to automatically divert into our savings in order to hit that goal? And so again, you can just keep asking these questions. What's the next action? What's the next action? Until you have a list of actions. And if you have all those lists, again, maybe that's in the note with your goal. You have your goal that you, you review once a week and you also have the list of actions. It's a simple checklist in there that you can check off, hey, the next action I need to do. What's the next action I need to do? What's the next action I need to do in order to achieve that goal? So it's time to take action, right? You have the steps, you have the goal, you have steps that you can take that you've broken down into very easy, very achievable steps. Now do them. Talk is cheap, right? Listening is cheap too. Just listening to this is not enough. Nothing will change your life until you do something about it. Don't just dream. Set goals. Don't just set goals. Plan for them. Make a plan for it. And, and don't just plan. Act. Intentions, ambitions, aspirations, while important, hold little weight without the corresponding action. The true magic lies in the courage to take that first step of translating those thoughts into deeds. So remember, nothing matters until you take action. Take action step by step and watch your aspirations materialize into achievable results. Let's make 2024 the year that we make a plan and take action on that plan to achieve the things that we want to achieve. And if you need help, that's what we're here for. Happy New Year. Cheers. If you enjoyed that, you would love being part of our free membership community. It's called Retire Membership. And there's a host of benefits all for free. For example, you can always buy my book, 3D Retirement Income, on Amazon. But if you join us at Retire Membership, we will send you either a hard copy or paperback for free, provide the ebook and the audiobook so that you can listen to it if you don't have time to read it. In addition to that, we'll also provide you with a bunch of content that you can't get anywhere else. For example, we have our quarterly retire mentorship magazine which comes out quarterly and has no ads whatsoever. It's just timely content to help you stay the course. We also have workbooks for our free online workshop to help you get the most out of those. Flowcharts to help you make better decisions and a weekly email to provide timely content that you can unsubscribe from at any time. We never ask for any payment information and we never share your information with anyone else. We just want to provide timely content and help you stay the course to retire successfully and stay successfully retired. There's no reason to wait. So join us now at retiremembership.com where you can click in the link in the description and it'll go right there. We can't wait to see you in the community. Cheers. This podcast is educational only and is not investment, tax, or legal advice.